Okay, in anticipation of Hurricane Irene, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some friends and I were talking about, you know, some survival techniques. Uh, a friend of mine is newly located. He's gotten a new job in this, uh, in the D.C. area. And he's actually staying in a hotel right now. He doesn't have a house or an apartment or anything yet. So we were talking about what he could do in an emergency if power goes out in the D.C. area and water. Now, he was talking about using candles to... Uh, to, um, excuse me, purify the water to make it safe to drink. And at first, you know, I was trying to talk him into getting a stove or something like that. And uh, at first I kind of laughed at it. He said, well, you don't have to boil it. All you have to do is pasteurize it. You have to get it to a temperature of 160. So that got me thinking last night, you know, maybe that's possible. Maybe it's even possible to boil water. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do an experiment with these little tea lights, which I have lots of, which, excuse me, which uh, lots of people have in their homes. They uh, heat things up and it's kind of mood lighting. So I want to see with tea lights what you could do, if it's possible to boil water or pasteurize it. The thing with pasteurizing is you probably have to heat it up to 160 and then you have to... Um, let it let it stay at that temperature for about a half an hour. So I've got my my little stand that I made for my penny stoves. Maybe you guys have seen other videos. It's made out of um, two pieces of stiff wire and one of those tubes that go in the back of the toilet that I cut down to this short section, which makes a nice pot stand. Now I'm getting lots of heat there. So I filled my little uh, aluminum container up about half full with water. And I'll put that on there and I'm going to see if I can boil it or pasteurize it or something like that. I'm going to use a lid because it'll cook more efficiently or heat more efficiently. Now if you don't have one of these aluminum pots you could probably use an aluminum can of beans you know after you eat the beans or anything like that. So let's see if we can get this up to temperature and if so how long that takes and uh, I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay, it is five minutes in, and I'm going to measure the water temperature. Put some tiny bubbles in there. And of course, taking that lid off is going to make the water heat a little more slowly. Waiting for the thermometer to come up. It's having a hard time getting to 100 after five minutes. So I'm going to put the lid back on and continue along. This candle should burn quite a while, so I don't think I'm in any hurry to uh, to get the water to a boil or pasteurize it or whatever we're going to do. Okay, it's uh, 6 minutes 18 seconds. You know, I have a lot more candles, so why not use them? So I have more tea lights downstairs, but I also have um, these candles. So I'm going to go ahead and light that and stick that under there, because why not? Lots of people have these kind of candles in their home, and you can get a bag of tea lights for a couple bucks. So you can easily get these. So I've added a fifth, uh, fifth candle to that, so it should heat up a little faster. Okay, my friends, I am 14 minutes into this experiment. <clears throat> I just want to let you know, I replaced that one candle I had with a, another tea light just because I didn't want wax all over one of our dinner plates, <laughs> which would be hard to get off. So, let's take the lid off. I've got some really, really tiny bubbles in there. It's getting up there. Almost got it to 120. All I need to do is get it to 160 and keep it there for a half an hour. So we'll check back in a little while. I'm in no hurry here because I'm using candles and they should burn for should, I don't I don't know how long tea lights will burn for, but they should burn for at least a half an hour. Um, so we'll check back in another ten minutes or fifteen minutes and see what we have. Okay, we're twenty one minutes in and I have recently added a sixth tea light over here because I had them. As I said there are couple bucks a big bag of maybe 50 or something. About that a seventh. 
Now, um, before doing this, the temperature of the water is 140 degrees after 20 minutes. So we're going to give it a little boost here, and I'll be back with you guys in a few minutes. Okay, we're about 26 minutes into the experiment. Let's uh, measure that water temperature, see what we have. Uh, big bubbles, actually. Come on, baby, come on. My thermometer says 159. Give it a few minutes, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be up to 160. I'm not even going to measure it again. I am going to set a timer on the microwave and see if we can keep that up to that temperature for a half an hour. And I'll be back with you in about a half an hour. In the meantime, I am going to have my favorite beverage in the world, and that is coffee. So I'll be back with you guys in a few minutes. Okay, the experiment still continues. I'm about 30 minutes in total, not, not from the time of 160, but 30 minutes total. Now, I don't know anything about pasteurization, um, so I was online checking. I had some time, and I'm looking at ways to solar pasteurize water in like third world countries and they've done some experiments and apparently 160 is actually hotter than you need it to be um, according to this website which I'll provide a link on my um, on my web page if you even get the water to 149 it kills even hepatitis A really quickly um, let's see what it says here Chart below indicates the temperature at which the most common waterborne pathogens are rapidly killed, thus resulting in at least 90% of the microbes becoming inactivated in one minute at the given temperature. The 90% reduction is an indicator frequently used to express the heat sensitivity of various microbes. Thus, five minutes at this temperature would cause at least 99.999% five log reduction in viable microbes capable of causing disease. And this is from solar cooking.wikia.com and again I will add a link on my website so apparently 160 is higher than you need it to be so if you can get it to 149 and keep it there for about five minutes you should be safe but we're going to continue the experiment we're going to see one how hot the water gets and two if I can keep it up to that temperature for half an hour now I'm five minutes into the experiment after it got to a temperature of 160 so I just want to give you guys an update Okay, just for kicks, I wanted to check this. Um, I'm at total time of 32 minutes, and I am 5 minutes 30 seconds since I, well, I can see some steam, since I brought the temperature up to 160. And it's boiling. I've got boiling water, and that is safe. That is safe to drink, no matter what anybody says. I've got, let's see if you can see that. You can't. I'm going to put the lid back on. I had definitely a boil. So let me bring the camera a little closer. So 33 minutes into the experiment, using seven tea lights, starting with four, I've got a boil going. So in the event that Irene hits this area and the water goes out in the city, um, and the electricity, you can, uh, you can boil water with tea lights. And you can get a bag of tea lights for, like I said, a buck or two. They definitely usually have them at the dollar store, definitely usually. Now that little wire pot adjuster that I have, um, I just remembered since the start of the video that those are eighth inch welding rods that I got from a welding supply company and they cost, I don't know, 33 cents, 50 cents a piece. That tube, like I said, is from the uh, tank connector on the back of a toilet. Now if you're too lazy to put down the potato chips, turn off the TV and crawl off the couch and go to the hardware store and get some stiff wire and a tube for the toilet, then maybe natural selection is going to play its role but um, it's really easy to do and you should do this ahead of time and if you have one of these little holders you've got lots of options to sterilize your water you can make a penny stove like I plans on my website or you can use tea lights if you have them now if you're a single guy you might not have tea lights but if you've got a wife or a girlfriend I bet you got some tea lights hanging around and if you don't go to the store and get yourself a bag of them so I'll measure this in a minute after it comes back up to temperature and I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you it boiling. 
Okay, here we are 35, 36 minutes into the experiment total since I started this whole process. I think I hear it boiling in there, so let's lift off the lid and see. And I'm going to try to measure it with the, um, with the thermometer. So I've got a rolling boil. No kidding, a rolling boil. I don't know at what temperature water boils, but it says 100 and... Up, it's going up. Maybe my thermometer is not the most accurate. But it almost went to 180, but it doesn't matter because I know it was boiling. I thought water boiled at 220 degrees, but maybe I'm wrong. So it, it stops boiling when you take the lid off, as you see. So you want to, whatever you're doing, whether you're using a can of beans or something, you want to fashion a lid because it'll, it'll heat up a lot faster, more efficiently. So, let's see. Got plenty of tea light left. Um, I'm going to let it cook for about 10 minutes and uh, see what we have. Now, I definitely, the water is definitely safe to drink now. Um, or almost, almost definitely. Now, if it's not 10 minutes later, it's going to be safe to drink. And I've got plenty of wax left in my tea lights. So I think I could cook quite a while on that or boil water quite a while or many, many different times. What I'm going to do is after I'm done with this 10 minutes, I'm going to blow out all those candles and then I'm going to take a video of them, um, see how much candles left because that's a, you know, that's a good thing to know how many times you could do this in a, in a storm. Now it looks like the tea lights are still three quarters full of wax. So I think they'll burn quite a while like that, but, um, I'm going to let it do it, let it cook for another 10 minutes. Let's see what time it is. 37 minutes, so I'm going to let it cook till 47 minutes. I'm going to measure the water one final time, and then I'm going to blow it out, and we're going to look at the tea lights after they cool to see how much more um, heat we can get out, out of them later. So I'll let you know. Okay, I am 42 minutes into the experiment total, and I can hear it boiling. And I don't know if you can see it, but steam's coming out of here. So, as I said, I'm going to let it go until 47 minutes, which I, w I know the water would be safe at that point to drink. And uh, I'll measure it again. Now, I found out that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, I think my thermometer might be a little off, which means that it was probably up to 160 degrees way before I thought it was. Um, which means you can easily purify water. And now I'm thinking you could also cook on something like this. Um, if you had some rice and some tuna fish, um, you know, your first priority would be to get clean drinking water, of course. But after that, you could boil some water. You could throw in some pasta, some dried pasta you have, some rice. If you had a little tuna fish, you could mix that in. A little canned salmon, you could mix that in. Um, so you could actually cook and eat with this. Um, who knew it was so easy to survive in a disaster? We just have to use our heads, I guess. Um, this is kind of interesting for me. I don't know if it's interesting for you, and I'm glad my friend mentioned it. Um, he got the idea, apparently, from watching one of those survival shows um, that I haven't seen yet. But I'll be back with you when the uh, experiment is at 47 minutes total, and I've got three minutes to go. And okay, I am at 47 minutes and 10 seconds. I am 20 minutes um, from the time that I thought it was at 160, which it probably was higher because as I said, my new thermometer is off. Um, we wanted a good analog one that didn't need batteries, but I think we need to get a different one. So it's been boiling, um, or it's been above 160 degrees for 20 minutes, which uh, it's definitely safe. But I'm not worried about time right now because I saw it boil. So uh, there it is, it's still boiling, it was rolling, a rolling boil. Before I took the lid off. So I'm going to blow the candles out and I'm going to show you what they look like after they cool down. Look at that. Easy to put out too, which is nice. Um, I don't like to burn my penny staves inside because it's alcohol. If you tipped it over, it could catch the house on fire. But I think this setup with a dinner plate and seven tea lights and my wire pot holder is actually pretty safe. I, I have no problem doing that inside. People burn candles inside all the time. Um, so I think it's a pretty safe setup, and it's not something you, you would need to worry about um, catching the house on fire. So that's kind of nice, too. You don't have to worry about carbon monoxide poisoning, I don't think, with seven candles. 
So uh, I think that's a pretty efficient and easy way to purify water and even cook on. So I'll be back with you in a few minutes after the candles cool and I'll show you uh, how much is left in those tea lights. And that would give you a good indication of how much more cook time you had. So run out to the store, get yourself some 1 8 inch welding rods, uh, one of those flexible toilet water connectors. Um, you need something to cook in and a bag of tea lights for a couple bucks. So I would say um, if you don't want one of these pots, these, these pots come in a set of $17. I got them at REI. Um, you don't need to do that. You can use a big tin can. I'd say, geez, for no more than 10 bucks, you can have an emergency cook stove to boil water. Now, let's discuss sources of water for a minute. So where can you get water to cook in these or to purify? Now, since we boiled the water, you can actually use toilet tank water. Now, you don't want to drink toilet tank water because you don't want to drink it without boiling it because it could have E. coli in it. The water from your water heater, most people have 40, 50 gallon water heaters and that water is clean. That, that water is cooked in there and it comes directly from the uh, city, so it should be clean. And of course, stored water is a good idea. So um, I think it should be pretty easy to survive in this area, in the east, that's not having a drought. Um, in the event of a hurricane, we just have to use our heads. But uh, I enjoyed this experiment. It was fun. I never thought of this before, so it's good to talk to people. As I said, I'll be back with you in a few minutes to see how much uh, wax is left in the tea lights, so, which would indicate how much cook time you would have left on these seven tea lights. So for a couple dollars, um, you can have a way to purify water. So I'll be back with you after these cool. Okay, and here we go. Now some of these tea lights I had used before, but um, looks like you got about half to three quarters left of wax. I'd say probably closer to three quarters because some of those tea lights I had used before, they weren't brand new. So it uh, looks like you got a little viable cook stove here out of tea lights. Now again, these wires are 1 8 inch, I think they're 1 8 inch welding rods that I got from a welding supply company. You might be able to find them at a hardware store. This is one of those flexible toilet tubes uh, that connect the water to the back of the toilet tank. I got that, definitely got that at a hardware store. You can get the tea lights anywhere. Um, that pan, as I said, I got from REI for 17 bucks, but you can use a big aluminum can if you fashion a lid. So there you go, a way to cook and boil water so it's safe in your home in the event of a disaster. So get yourself some supplies and then you're set, you're ready to go.